Monday, October 6, 2008. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the EVCast. I'm Bo Bennett. I'm Ryan Levac. And this is episode number 94 of the EVCast. Episode number 94. Do you have a good weekend? Ryan? I had a great weekend, Bo, and I guess you did as well, because there is a real excitement in your voice this morning. Is there? There is. Uh, what am I supposed to be excited about today? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe our, our interview this morning. You're all, yes, the interview. All stoked about that. Of course. I love speaking with creative, inventive people when it comes to the EV world. And today is no exception. Interviewer, I mean, uh, begin our, uh, what is it called, introduction. Huh? Oh. <laughs> We're going to speak with inventor Greg Zanis of Sugar Grove, Illinois. Mr. Zanis has recently patented an electric car he calls Dream Car 123. This futuristic one-person safety vehicle uses today's technology, but eliminates many of the traditional car systems, producing a car that is more efficient, faster, and safer to drive than today's mechanical car on the street. The Dream Car 123 actually began as a childhood dream when Zanis, the son of Greek immigrants who spoke new, no English in the home, started thinking about sketching out the car. Zanis, the son of Zeus. <laughs> With Zanis' electric car, the consumer doesn't just plug into the garage electricity for recharging. Instead, Zanis has developed a unique garage that allows the consumer to drive in and recharge using energy that was harvested from the garage itself. Wow. I'd like to find out about that. Well, we are going to. Let's give him a call. And see how he turns garages into energy portals. Harvest the energy from the garage. Good morning, this is Greg. Good morning, Greg. Bo Bennett from the EVCast. How are you, sir? Fine, how are you doing? Doing great, thanks. Hello, Greg. Ryan Levesque, also from the EVCast, also on the line. Also, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Ryan. I talked to you a few minutes ago. That's right. Well, how long before we're on? Or is this no, we're on now. We don't waste oh, any time. Oh, now. Well, oh, yeah. I'd like to introduce myself, of course. I'm Greg Zana, the inventor of Dreamcar123, and that com, of course, that's our webpage. And we're trying to build a long-range, very powerful, very fast electric car. We've built a couple of prototypes now, and we're getting ready to build our third car. And uh, you probably have already gone to our webpage, but we're planning to build a car that's going to go over 100 miles an hour and possibly up to 200 miles an hour. And hopefully, it'll have 1,000 miles down range. So how this car operates is it pretty much runs on eight batteries at a time, running four motors, getting you up to speed. And that's pretty much standard using eight batteries in an electric car. Once once you're up to speed, you you start by going and using all four motors, and once you're up to speed, you go back down to two motors. What you do is when your batteries are dead after 45 to 90 miles, depending on how hard you're driving them, mm -hmm. you switch over to another pack of batteries, and we can do that 10 times, giving us range like no other car has ever had before. And we're just talking about standard lead-acid batteries, correct? Yeah, I'm reading a story right now about lithium-ion batteries, and they're so impractical, Bo and uh, Ryan, because first off, you've got to cool them, and, and secondly, my batteries are $70 a piece. They're 300 to $500 a piece, and that just puts them out of the range of a regular person. Those are expensive, Those are definitely. Uh, so you have eight or ten different compartments that each hold eight batteries. That's a that's a lot of batteries. Total of eighty batteries, right? Yeah, this is a very very heavy car. It's it's not a standard kind of a car that you're used to seeing. Right. When we started this project, we actually designed a frame trying to see what was the maximum amount of batteries we could put in. And of course, these are standard batteries that everybody's using. They're called either Deep Cycle 6s or Deep Cycle 12s. Our present car is a 36-volt system, and our next car will be a 48-volt system. The difference in the next car was is that right now it takes six batteries to run the motors, 
when we go back to the 48 volt system, it'll take four batteries to do the same thing because we're going from six volts to 12 volts. Okay. Well, before we get into too many of the details, let's talk about the shape of your car because that is by far the most distinguishing <laughs> most characteristic striking thing about, about it. the car. Why don't you tell us about what your car looks like? Describe it for our listeners who have, have not seen a picture of it as of yet. Well, we kind of like to refer to it as something out of George Jetson, like a spaceship. It's pyramidal in shape, and the reason for that is we wanted to protect the wheels all the way around. So it also looks like a spaceship at night. It's lit up from the inside out with 15-watt neon, so the car is actually glowing when you see it. From And also, all the way around the car, we put one-half-inch bulletproof uh, Lexan uh, glass all the way around it. Mm -hmm. There's two reasons for that. One is to let the light out, and also we've designed a car that we feel will survive any type of a crash. So we took it out last night, and <laughs> on a 14-mile on a run, we got stopped over 30 times, people stopping us wanting to know, what is that? Is that a spaceship? And, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's an unbelievable uh, magnet or attractor for everybody. This particular car only goes 45 miles an hour, so we're not able to outrun anybody yet. Right. <laughs> what they do is they, they pass us and they block us and <laughs> take pictures. And it, it took two hours to go 14 miles last night. It was unbelievable. But we, we, we stopped because we want people to see this. It, it also looks like it's hovering because you don't actually see the wheels, so it's... Um, it's, it's called a pyramidal. The, the bottom part is wider and the top part is a true pyramid. And part of that is we uh, want to eliminate wind drag when we build our faster car. So this, this isn't exactly the car for everybody, you know, but it's, it's certainly different. We're hoping people, you know, the industry will look at adding more batteries and making a car safer. I don't know if I explained to you earlier, but we've also pre-inflated an airbag inside of the car all the way around. So when you're in the nose cone, you have three and a half inches of, air, of Kevlar airbag. Mm -hmm. So if you hit the, the bulletproof glass, you're not going to hit it. You're going to hit this 15-pound airbag with your head. And all around the interior, it's also extremely padded. And the car is built out of very heavy, heavy I-beams. It's... Uh, 10, I mean, 12 inch by 5 inch I beams all the way around, and it, the subframe is three and a half inch tubular, square tubular beams. It, like I say, since we're building a heavy car anyway, it doesn't hurt to uh, make it a crash proof car. I don't know if I if you've gone to the web page or not. Oh yeah. It, in there, you're you're gonna see, you know, a very very strange car. No, you know it's. You know, nobody's ever attempted anything like this before. And uh, you guys got more questions, I hope. Oh, we yeah. do, we do, yeah. Mr. Sanis, I want to ask you, in looking at your website, I, uh, hopefully you can clear this up for me. I thought I read that the car can reach speeds of 200 miles per hour and 200 miles per charge. Is this the same vehicle we're talking about, or...? There, there's three cars. It's very confusing, you know, especially if you read the whole thing. If you go to the Channel 2 uh, news broadcast, they talk about the car that will do 200 miles an hour. This car right now only does 45 miles an hour. We're building a car now that will go 200 miles an hour. So it's very confusing. I'm sorry about that. But, you know, some people are, are taking things out of context and reading some of the cover page, and then it's especially the examiner, they, they blew it completely out of proportion. Uh. So they never even interviewed with me, Bo, so I don't know what to say other than I don't really so much apologize. It's, it's a very confusing uh, project, and uh, we do have goals, of course, so does that explain anything to you? It, it does, It yeah. does. Now, I... I also wonder, though, in the same article, and this was an article right on your, your site, it says that uh, with future revisions, you're hoping for higher speeds reaching up to 300 miles per hour. I, yeah, I'm just yeah, curious yeah. as to why is that level of speed something that you would even Bottle aspire up. to? Well, we think the future is, you know, if you look at my car, it looks like it's a...